Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is healing an official son. The miracles that Jesus performed demonstrated that Jesus was God's anointed one, and this led many people to believe in him. Jesus performed miracles everywhere he went. John said, Now when Jesus was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. John chapter 2 and verse 23. While in Jerusalem, he met with a Pharisee named Nicodemus. Nicodemus said to Jesus, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. John chapter 3 and verse 2. Jesus is still doing mighty miracles, and many people are turning to him for healing and salvation. Soon after that, Jesus returned to Galilee. John wrote, when Jesus came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, having seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the feast, for they too had gone to the feast. John chapter 4 and verse 45. So Jesus came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had made the water wine, John chapter 4 and verse 46. Turning water into wine was a miracle that symbolized the new message and good news that Jesus preached. Jesus had many friends in Cana, and people were happy to see him again. Approximately one year had passed since his last known visit to Cana. Shortly after returning to Cana, Jesus was visited by a desperate dad, but not just any dad. He was a high official who lived in Capernaum. The word John used for the official is basilikos. This is not a religious title. It is a political one. Most likely the man was a high official in the court of Herod Antipas. Some call him a royal official. In John chapter 4 we read, At Capernaum there was a royal official whose son was ill. John chapter 4 and verse 46. There should be no doubt the man already sought the best medical help that money could buy. It is frequently said that money cannot buy health. Good health is the one desire all people have in common. Both the rich and the poor want good health for themselves and for their families. If you are a wealthy person who has run out of medical options, I invite you to turn to Jesus for help. Use your resources to get in the presence of anointed followers of Jesus who know how to release the healing power of God. Somehow this official heard about the miracles of Jesus and he felt compelled to leave his son to beg Jesus to come down to Capernaum and heal him. Now the distance from Capernaum to Cana is about 20 miles. Uh, Capernaum sits 700 feet below sea level and Cana sits about 1,500 feet above sea level. So the journey to Cana is 2,200 foot uphill climb. The man was willing to do that to get help. To walk from Capernaum to Cana takes about six hours. And so the man made his way to Cana to look for Jesus. He came to Jesus not as an official, but as a desperate dad. John says, when the man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. John chapter 4 and verse 47. We learn in verse 52 that the son was also running a very high fever. Maybe you have a loved one who has a high fever and is at the point of death. Take heart, 
we're going to ask Jesus to heal your loved one today. You can be certain that the arrival of an official from Capernaum in a small town like Cana quickly came to the attention of the people. Everyone wanted to know who was in trouble. <clears throat> in response to the man begging Jesus to heal his son, and seeing a crowd quickly gathering, Jesus made a rather startling statement to the man. He said, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. John chapter 4 and verse 48. You is in the plural. This means that Jesus was speaking to everyone listening to the conversation between him and the official. This dad could have easily been offended by what Jesus said. Uh, Jesus frequently says offensive things to people in order to reveal the heart of the person he was talking to. Here is an important principle. What offends your mind reveals your heart. Sometimes we hear critics say, I'll believe it when I see it. <clears throat> but faith says, you'll see it when you believe it. This dad passed the offense test easily because of his deep love for his son. It did not matter to him what Jesus said as long he was willing to do what money could not buy for his family. The official said, Sir, giving deference to Jesus, come down before my child dies. John chapter 4 and verse 49. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. And the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went on his way. In an instant, the certainty of death was lifted off of the man's son. The man believed what Jesus said. Without insisting on Jesus going with him back to Capernaum, he believed his son was healed and he began his journey home. This is a powerful story about Jesus' ability to heal over distance. It's an encouragement to us because I believe today Jesus is going to heal over distance one more time. Jesus does not need to be present to release healing power. Even though there was not enough daylight left for the official to make it back to Capernaum, he wanted to get as close to home as he could before the sun set. The next day, an amazing surprise awaited him. As he was going down, his servants met him and told him that his son was recovering. John chapter 4 and verse 51. He asked them the hour when he began to get better. And they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. John chapter 4 and verse 52. The seventh hour in Roman time is approximately between 1 and and 2 p.m. The father knew it was at that very hour that Jesus said to him, your son will live. And he himself believed and all his household, John chapter 4 and verse 53. What a great statement. Here is a dad who led his whole family to faith in Jesus, including his servants. Notice the fever left the boy the moment Jesus declared he will live. It may have taken some time for the son to regain his strength, but the root cause of his illness was instantly healed. If you have a child at the point of death, I command the root cause of that fever to be instantly healed right now by the power of Jesus. I invite you to feel your child's head or take his temperature and see what change has just come about. If the fever has gone, please message me. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. But before I leave you, let me take a few moments and pray for you. Perhaps you are a government official and you have a sick son or daughter. You've done all you can, you've spent your money but money cannot help your child. 
and your child is at the point of death. Jesus wants to heal your child. And as I speak, believe that you are hearing the voice of Jesus speaking through my voice. And over the distance that is between us now, I stretch my hand out towards your family, sir. Believe that Jesus is willing to heal. Do what this official did. He believed the word Jesus spoke. Fever, go in this precious child. Son, get up right now by the power of Jesus. Daughter, arise by the healing power of Jesus. We send healing from this place around the world. In addition to this fever and whatever condition your child is in, I want to say a few more healing words and especially I feel led to pray over throat cancer today. Throat cancer, go in the name of Jesus. Go right now if you feel a sensation in your throat, a tingling or a heat that's a token of the presence of God upon you. Go and have your throat cancer checked again and you will find that God has healed you. God is the ability to heal over great distances. And so we invite you to re-listen to this message and play it for a friend who you know. Whether they're rich or poor, the healing power of God is available to all. God bless you as you listen to this message again. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.